Maybe you've heard of this by now, but this is a thing. Good Shepherd is alleging that we have had unauthorized use of their trademark. Don't worry, I have one of the best legal teams. This is something multi-million dollar companies deal with all the time. We'll be handling this. Inevitably, my detractors are going to latch onto this as if it's some gotcha, oh, he slipped up. But now is the time to be serious. Outside of the given context, most of what I'm about to say isn't even aimed at the people that filed the lawsuit. The internet is an interesting place. We make fun of each other and we can do that. We can make our gripes known and we can dislike others. This is something that every individual is free to do. But I'd like to think that there's a line that shouldn't be crossed when it comes to initiating conflict. At minimum, one should be prepared to deal with those consequences. I certainly am. This has real world implications and because livelihoods are potentially impacted, I must take this seriously as the owner of this company. What we have right now is a textbook example of gay ops. Not too long ago, there was an accusation of false flagging, and I'm going to show you an example of fair use. Let's set the scene. There's more than likely some reference to me before, but a fat person by the name of Vito really ramped up his public hatred of me at the launch of the Ripperverse last year. Since then, very frequently, this person has made a point to speak negatively about me and this company. Oddly enough, his friend joined in. Once I publicly rejected the opinions that were masked as a review of ISOM number one, he ramped up his public down talking. He can word it as if I'm the one tripping at the criticism, but having his opinion be dissected and then be discarded may have hurt his feelings. Since then, I've had several other things, very interesting things that have been levied at me, and we've collected the receipts on those. I can't give you everything. But this is how the internet works, so talking noise isn't a problem. There are drama farmers out there, they need to conjure up things. Some may consider it to be admirable that they have to talk about me to get the most engagement. But what happened out of this is what you'll take exception to. You may be thinking, why would something like this happen now? We are two books in and a full year removed from the launch of the Ripperverse. This may have something to do with it. In this lawsuit, they allege July Ripper's accusations have caused actual confusion. An example of that actual confusion is shown in the following highlighted copy of an unsolicited email from a third party in which the sender specifically mentions the identity of the trademark ISOM and the cross on the hero's bill. They then show this email from some guy named Obtuse Gnome that was apparently sent to them. In it, a guy claims that he is a journalist by the name of Roy. He concerns trolls pretending like he is doing a story of our success after acting as if he loves to see this. He states, I would be curious to know when the decision was made to make a comic book character using the same name as the International School of Ministry. Has Mr. July received any funding to aid him in the creation of superhero ISOM? Info on the choice to have ISOM have an image of a cross on his belt. What we can hope to see with continuation of ISOM on his journey to rescue Jasmine from prostitution. And if you could the amazing choice to offer the buyers the option to donate a copy of ISOM number two. He then says, I thank you so much extending your trademarked name in such a unique way and the creation of a new superhero. It is apparent that this person knew what they were doing. They were attempting to encourage a baseless lawsuit. But look again at the beginning and the end of this email. This person claims they were journalists for TDS News and TPBITU. Those obviously stand for the show of the two individuals, the dick show and the biggest problem in the universe. So is there actually a connection between the two individuals and this person that sent this email? Well, let's discuss. This person goes by the name Optus Gnome in their email. There happened to be a Twitter account under that same exact name that has since been suspended for Lord knows what. This account used to tweet constantly at me and about me and he only popped up after these two individuals kicked off their hatred of me. Here's an old screenshot from when the account was active. A new account has popped up under a similar name, profile, picture, and what do you know? Look who the first three accounts are that this person followed. Surely it's just a coincidence, right? It gets worse. Back in July, we announced that we would be working with Comic Books for Kids, an organization that has tasked itself with getting comics to kids in need. 
As to be expected, these two attempted to delegitimize our efforts and made some very bold accusations that we have receipts on. In this tweet right here, Vito claims we asked a charity if they need more comics. In that tweet, he shows an email from Mark, who is the owner of Comic Books for Kids. Sharing this may have been a critical error because we were able to obtain the entire email chain. In the original email, you see that Vito tried to block out the name. The original contact is from the same email from a guy by the same name. Yet again, concern trolling, this time acting as if he is so concerned about comic books for kids being scammed. Here's the original email. Without the name being blacked out, you see Mark refers to him as Roy. Again, what we have here is Vito himself using the term we, which would suggest he's included with this specific contact. Never mind if this could be interference, just how involved are they in this? Well, here they are on the show referring to contacting comic books for kids. So we contacted that charity. Uh, so this is the, the final email that I got. So we have a tweet where he uses this email seemingly pointing to an example of we being in contact with the charity. And on video, it looks as if he does something similar. Remember, this is all a concern troll, and one can question if they care about this charity at all. They did down talk them as well. Comic books for kids. Is there enough kids. backstory for comic books for kids? Okay. Yeah. And at first I thought maybe I shouldn't talk about this because I don't want to fuck up that guy's deal. The, com right. the comic the, the, book the, the charity, charity guys. Sure. Yeah, but then I thought, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Uh, this is a bad charity, first of all. And this is why I said, well, I probably shouldn't say this kind of stuff because it'll fuck up this guy's deal. But again, it's already happened. fuck it. Perhaps screaming false flagger turns a lie into truth or something or makes one feel justified in their questionable behavior. If you think that this was in response to those nonsensical allegations against me in early August, well, look at the timestamp. The claims that were in reference to the charity were made a full month before that. These claims could have been an attempt to get myself or the company in trouble with the state, and I didn't initiate that. What does false flagger even mean in this context? Here we see one of them saying, I am on a false flagging spree because this account that was suspended, but the suspended account doxed one of our warehouse addresses and a personal home address. Apparently that is false flagging. Could it be that someone is working overtime to attempt to ruin my life and what I've built? I mean, this was said in that video. I, man, I, I'm an asshole for fun. I like it. If I can say I'm doing it for kids, no. it's just a socially acceptable way for me to act like a psychopath. Yeah. See, so this is a big opportunity for me to be cruel to people. I think this is also, it's really important that it's called Eric, motivation. Eric How expensive this is going to be, hmm, that's the golden question. So now the rules for the playing field have been set and I'm the responding agency. Parties have shown that they have no problem either using the state against us themselves or running op campaigns to maybe push someone else to do it for them. This impacts not only myself, but the dozens of other employees and contractors that work for our company. Now, we sniffed this out a long time ago, but if we didn't, the ramifications could be very serious. We're talking things that destroy livelihoods and imprison people. Now, of course, there are some people hoping like hell that something like that would happen to myself as they start from hating me and then work backwards. But this is a step above just simple Internet trolling or jokes. No longer am I playing around. Again, receipts have been collected, so deleting your posts, videos, and such won't do you any good. Just understand that we will be acting accordingly. It's what you wanted after all. We don't need to run a crowdfunding campaign quite yet. You know where to find us and how to support us. We know you will keep rocking with me and the people that depend on what it is that we've built. Until then, about this specific thing, I'll be moving in silence. We ain't going anywhere.